Over the course of the 21st century, the cancer field has seen an incredible rise in the number of promising and attractive therapeutics. Immunotherapy in particular, which boosts the immune system, has really changed the game. And in this video, I'll be giving a brief rundown on the various arcs and developments in cancer research by explaining five of the most important cancer therapies using rent girlfriend waifus. Kazia, as we all know, is cancer. And this malignant mass is constantly surrounded by a harem of sexy waifus who all believe that they can fix him. Similarly, a whole harem of promising and attractive therapies for treating cancer has emerged in recent years. And true to their harem nature, these therapies constantly compete with each other for the title of best cancer killer. But at times, these therapies can also work together in combination to cure cancer. The five waifus that we will be salivating over in this video are Mami-chan, Ruka-chan, Sumi-chan, Yaimori-san, and Chizuru, goddess. And the five cancer therapies that we'll be taking a closer look at are one, toxic chemotherapy, two, second gen chemo in the form of antibody drug conjugates, three, CAR T cell therapy, which involves super saiyan immune cells, four, mRNA therapy, the newest kind of cancer therapy, and five, immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy, which is the most revolutionary cancer therapy so far. So without further ado, let's get right to it. We're going to be starting off with Mami-chan, because I just want to get this, mm, what's the right word for her? BITCH OUT OF THE WAY AS SOON AS POSSIBLE. Mami-chan is the very definition of chemotherapy. Mami-chan is toxic and so are chemotherapies. Chemotherapies at their very core are specialized toxins. Chemotherapy drugs are extremely toxic to cancer cells, but because of their toxic nature, they can inflict serious harm to normal cells as well. Just like how Mami-chan was Kazuya's first love, chemotherapy was the first kind of drug successfully developed to fight against cancer. Unfortunately, however, both chemotherapy and Mami-chan have a lot of issues. Chemotherapy really messes with normal cells, resulting in a variety of serious side effects. But the bigger problem with chemotherapy is that cancer can ultimately develop resistance to chemotherapy. This is just like how Kazuya, who was once head over heels in love with this bitch, ultimately became resistant to Mami-chan's toxic and manipulative schemes. This resisting phenomenon is known as drug resistance. Cancer cells are a lot like Kazuya's horny thoughts in the sense that both cancer cells and horny thoughts grow and multiply at alarming speeds. When Mami-chan first became Kazuya's girlfriend, she gave him wake-up call after wake-up call, causing Kazuya's horny thoughts to slowly disappear. This is just like what happens when you start taking chemo. A lot of the cancer cells in your body will die out at first, but sometimes a few cancer cells can remain in the body. Maybe the chemo dose was too low, or maybe the cancer cell was somewhere where the chemo couldn't reach it. Whatever the case may be, these remaining cancer cells can mutate. What was once a cancer cell vulnerable to Mami-chan can mutate in such a way that it no longer gives a shit about Mami-chan. And despite chemo treatments, this mutated cancer cell will continue to grow, divide, and ultimately give rise to a new kind of cancer in our body that's completely resistant to chemotherapy. Because basic toxins like Mami-chan have a lot of issues, they're on the way out, and they're starting to be replaced by more advanced toxins called antibody drug conjugates, or ADCs, which I will explain using Ruka-chan. In other words, the successor to Kazuya's first girlfriend, Mami-chan the chemotoxin, is Kazuya's second girlfriend, Ruka-chan the ADC. Ruka-chan and ADCs are both clingy as hell. Ruka was a wandering aimless rental girlfriend before she found a cancer to latch on to, and ADCs injected into our body wander or circulate in our blood until they find a cancer to latch on to. ADCs, like Ruka-chan, are extremely faithful and latch onto only cancer cells and not boring normal cell schmucks like Shunkun. 
This loyalty or selectivity as scientists call it is possible because ADCs like Ruka-chan are built different. The Y-shaped part of an ADC is an antibody, and this antibody acts as a homing device for ADCs to seek out and attach to the peculiar surfaces of cancer cells. And these balls conjugated to the antibody are extremely powerful chemo bombs which make the cancer cell that the ADC attaches to explode. Because ADCs latch onto only cancer cells and not normal cells, they are in theory less toxic than chemotherapy and thus mog basic bitch toxins like Mami-chan. ADCs, however, are a bit unstable, just like how Ruka is a little nutty in the head. And because of their instability, there's always the risk of them dropping toxic bombs on unsuspecting normal cells. Also, because ADCs are at the end of the day still a form of chemo, they have the same limitation that chemo has, which is that cancer can become resistant to them. And indeed, Kazuya was once nodding in the shower thinking about Ruka-chan in season 2, but does he even really give a fuck about her anymore? Honestly, I don't think she serves any purpose in this anime other than to get constantly cocked and heartbroken. Woo! Because of the limitations of toxic agents like Mami and Ruka-chan, some scientists have shifted their focus from developing toxins and have started to develop immune cell soldiers instead. And it's in this way that we enter the immunotherapy arc. These waifus and their therapies use T-cells, the strongest immune cells in our body, to fight cancer. T-cells can learn and adapt, which means that cancer cells can't resist T-cells as easily as they resist chemotherapies. The hard part about using T-cells to fight against cancer is convincing these cells to fight cancer in the first place. And the delicious waifus presented here try to persuade T-cells to attack cancer in two very different ways. Sumi-chan, the car T-cell, is one of those hard-working type waifus who goes above and beyond so she can bond with a cancerous MC. CAR T-cells are hard-working T-cells that also go above and beyond so they can bind to and destroy cancer. Sumi-chan steps out of her comfort zone to be a rental girlfriend, and T-cells are also pulled out of their comfort zones, aka our fucking bodies, and they're genetically modified in a lab, cyberpunk edgerunner style, until they become CAR T-cells with these green limbs or receptors called CARs. Alas, both Sumi-chan and CAR T-cells have the same fatal flaw. They can't get through you! Just like how Sumi-chan becomes shy under the crushing weight of society and the rowdy motherfuckers around her, CAR T-cells become extremely weak when they encounter a mass of solid tumor cells clumped together. Solid tumors are like the mean streets of Tokyo in the sense that they're extremely dense and have a hectic environment where fragile introverts like Sumi-chan and CAR T-cells cannot thrive. Does that mean that Sumi-chan and CAR T-cells are useless? No! CAR T-cells are really good at killing non-solid cancers or blood cancers such as leukemia. This is just like how Sumi-chan, who's not so good at talking in crowded public places, is much more active and ganky online, where the pressures of solid tumors and real life do not exist. Unfortunately, CAR T-cells, like rent-a-girlfriends, are stupid expensive. Rent-a-girlfriends cost around 50 bucks an hour, but the cost of CAR T-cells is out of this fucking world! CAR T-cells cost almost half a million dollars per treatment. CAR T-cell therapy is getting cheaper every year, but we've still got a long way to go before it can become more affordable. Alright boys, time for the big one. The best waifu of rent a girlfriend and the most revolutionary cancer therapy to date, Mizuhara Chizuru, an immune checkpoint inhibitor, or ICI. Despite the harem nature of the rent a girlfriend anime, Mizuhara is the only waifu who can truly cure Kazuya. Despite the harem nature of cancer therapy, ICI is the only therapy that can truly eliminate aggressive solid tumors. Mizuhara, the ICI, completely mogs chemotherapy in many cases. What makes Mizuhara and ICIs so damn top tier is their ability to empower. 
Mizuhara empowers the fucking losers around her, and these green ICIs bind to and empower T cells so they can become better at killing these brown cancer cells. The T cells in our body can sometimes get traumatized by solid tumors and lose their will to function as normal cells of the immune system. But as the rental girlfriends of the cancer therapy world, ICIs enter the gloomy hikikomori T cells life, hold its hand, and things begin to change. The T cell is no longer hikikomori, and it's able to stand face to face against cancer again. Previously incurable cancers, such as the extremely aggressive metastatic melanoma, can now be completely eradicated in some patients using ICIs. In all honesty though, Mizuhara is a way better waifu than ICIs are a cancer therapy because while ICIs can have miraculous effects for some types of cancers and patients, it has absolutely no effect for other types of cancers and patients. Scientists aren't exactly sure why this is the case, but it's believed that having high quality T cells in your body that can be empowered by ICIs determines whether ICIs can have an anti-cancer effect or not. And so while ICIs were revolutionary when they first made their debut, the ICI scene has gotten sort of stale. Just like the rental girlfriend anime. But there's hope! For a rom-com that just runs around in circles for two seasons to make some fucking progress, it needs a wingman. For ICI therapy to progress to the next level, it also needs a wingman. And that wingman comes in the form of Yaimori san, the mRNA. Yaimori san and mRNA are the new kids on the block. Yaimori san made her debut in season 3 of the anime, and mRNA therapy is now entering stage 3 clinical trials. Yaimori san and mRNA are both wingmen because Yaimori san is not sexually attracted to Kazuya and mRNA is not an anti-cancer agent on its own. mRNA works alongside ICIs to cure cancer, just like how Yaimori-san works alongside Mizuhara so she can get together with Kazuya. mRNA therapy works by generating high-quality T-cells in our body that ICIs can then beef the fuck up to kill cancer. Both Yaimori-san and mRNA therapy haven't had much time in the spotlight, so shit's unpredictable, but that also means it's exciting and full of promise. Yaimori-san has got cancer quivering. Hopefully in the near future, Yaimori-san and mRNA will be able to solidify themselves as crucial wingmen in the fight against cancer. And that's basically the video. Don't get me wrong, I fucking hate Rent-A-Girlfriend, but IMO, it's the best anime to describe cancer therapy. A brief recap. Mami-chan is the toxic chemo drug, Ruka-chan is the clingy antibody drug conjugate, Sumi-chan is the glass cannon CAR T-cell, Mizahara is the revolutionary immune checkpoint inhibitor, and Yaimori-san is the wingman mRNA. I hope you found this interesting. This video's got me questioning my life decisions, so uh, please subscribe. See you next video.